Hey guys, I got a big one today. We'll be going over the history of the William Schulhorn Company, the inventor William Bernard, as well as the Sargent Company. So we got two companies, three stories, four interconnected timelines. It's going to be pretty epic, so let's get into it. We'll start with Schulhorn. The tale of Schulhorn starts in 1863 in New Haven, Connecticut, where William Schulhorn, an immigrant from Germany, had set up a machine shop. In 1870, the building his shop occupied suffered a boiler explosion. Thankfully, Schulhorn was out of town when it happened, but the business was a total loss. Schulhorn would move to a new location and team up with a friend, Julius Burbecker, who acted as a sales agent. In 1880, the duo then teamed up with another friend, Captain Frank Teasing, to form Schulhorn and Teasing Manufacturing Company. Their initial products were scissors and shears under the Star brand, along with dividers and calipers, pencil holders, cigar cutters, sleigh bells, locks, and other hardware specialties. Teasing would pass away in 1884 and Burbecker would buy out his shares. Schulhorn himself would pass away in 1890 and the business would then reincorporate in 1891 as just Schulhorn & Co. Now headed by J.J. Henderson as president, Schulhorn's son Frank as treasurer, and one William Bernard as vice president. William Bernard was born in 1848 in Lynchburg, Virginia, into a tobacco farming family. His first patent came at the age of 24 in 1872 when he invented a new type of tobacco knife. He would apprentice as a machinist and travel to Baltimore, Maryland, then to New York City, and eventually settle in New Haven, Connecticut, where he went to work for Schulhorn and became known as the Thomas Edison of hand tools. In 1890, Bernard created his most well-known invention, the parallel jaw pliers. These pliers used three pivot points and two sliding points to keep the pliers' jaws aligned with each other, no matter what the jaw size. They were truly revolutionary for their time, and are kind of a precursor to the Nipex pliers wrench. The Bernard pliers featured a simple folded sheet metal design for the handles, which allowed them to be mass-produced easily, and later on they'd be offered with a built-in wire cutter. Bernard would go on to produce at least 55 more patents for Schulhorn, including high-leverage nippers, several types of dividers, multiple types of hole punches, various designs of specialty pliers, slip joint pliers, a cool stapleless stapler, and this cool hand-operated nail set. His final patent was granted in 1930 at the age of 82 for these geared bolt cutters. When Bernard became VP of Schulhorn in 1891, he owned 200 shares, or around 15% of the company. One source said he had purchased a controlling interest, but I was not able to confirm that. Schulhorn would market Bernard's inventions under the Bernard brand, using a St. Bernard dog as the mascot. This dog would get them in trouble with another company, Riley Carr out of Sheffield, England, who also used the dog in their logo for Stanch brand files. The court initially ruled in favor of Riley Carr, even though files and pliers are two completely different things, Schulhorn appealed the decision and eventually won in 1912 after promising not to use the Bernard logo on any files. Schulhorn had a previous run-in with the legal system in 1896 when Adolf Schatz, who worked for the Bridgeport Manufacturing Company, invented another set of parallel jaw pliers that looked awful similar to Bernard's, the court ruled in favor of Schulhorn. Bridgeport would appeal in 1899, but ultimately lose. During World War I, Bernard pliers were purchased by the U.S. Army. In 1935, Schulhorn would move to a new location on Chapel Street. 
During World War II, Bernard pliers were again purchased by the U.S. Army, and after the war, many of those pliers were sold as surplus, with companies like Sears selling them as cheap as 37 cents each, which would be under five bucks in today's dollars. I suspect this caused Schulhorn some financial issues in the post-war era, as in March of 1946, the workers at the plant went on strike and picketed, dressed in formal evening wear, in front of the company president's house. The company president at the time was Lillian Burbecker Webb, who I believe was the daughter of Julius, but I couldn't confirm. I also couldn't confirm if the strike was ever ended, because in 1948, the William Schulhorn Company was purchased outright by Sargent Manufacturing, another New Haven company best known for their wood planes. To tell the story of Sargent, we're going to have to go back to the beginning, to 1849 in Leicester, Massachusetts, where Joseph Bradford Sargent took over his father's business, the J.D. Sargent Company, along with his brother, George Henry. The J.D. Sargent Company made hand cards, which were tools for straightening wool fibers in fabric mills. In 1854, the brothers changed the name to Sargent Brother and Company, there was no company at this time, but the Sargent brothers thought the name sounded better that way. They set up an office in New York and started a sales agency, selling locks and hardware on commission for other companies. When one of their clients, Peck and Walter of New Britain, Connecticut, needed money, the Sargents loaned it to them. And when Peck and Walter went out of business in 1857, the Sargent brothers were able to take ownership of the plant during the bankruptcy and renamed it the J.B. Sargent Co., now producing their own hardware. In 1863, Sargent moved to New Haven, Connecticut. By the end of the Civil War, Sargent was the largest supplier and distributor of hardware in the United States. The famous Sargent bench plane was introduced in 1884, Sargent would also receive numerous patents, many invented by John H. Shaw, like this adjustable system for plane knives. They also had a patent granted in 1891 for parallel jaw pliers. These also look similar to the Bernard ones, except they have a pivoting lower jaw. I've never seen one of these pliers IRL, so they may not have ever produced them, which would explain why they never got sued by Shoalhorn. J.B. Sargent would pass away in 1907 and G.H. in 1917, when Henry Sargent took over the company, until his death in 1927, when the company was then took over by George Sargent. By 1927, Sargent was no longer selling products manufactured by others, and they were making all their own tools and hardware in-house. A lot of their success came due to another company, Stanley Works, who built a new factory in 1923 with non-union labor. This drew the attention of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners, who initiated a boycott of Stanley Plains and switched to using Sargent ones. The boycott lasted up through 1925 and resulted in a great increase in sales for Sargent. George Sargent was the last sergeant to head sergeant when he passed away in 1936 he was replaced by philip e barth this gets us caught up to 1948 when sergeant bought out shoalhorn sergeant kept the manufacture of the bernard pattern pliers going in the original shoalhorn plant until 1967 By 67, most of Sargent's sales were coming from the locks and building hardware division and not from hand tools, so the company was split into two. The hardware portion was bought out by the Walter Kidder Company and renamed Sargent Manufacturing. Sargent Manufacturing would be purchased by Hanson Inc. in 1981 and then by Asa Abloy, a Swedish company, in 1989. This iteration of Sargent still exists today, making building and security hardware. But what about the hand tools? 
The hand tool division, including the Bernard pattern pliers, was purchased by Rostra Tool Company in 1987, and operations were moved to Branford, Connecticut. Rostra operated Sargent until 2014, when they were bought out by the Edeker Group, a private equity firm from Switzerland. So I guess that's the end of Schollhorn, Bernard, and Sargent Tools, huh? Nope. The U.S. division of Edeker rebranded as Elm City Tools in 2023, and they're still around, still making tools at the Branford plant, including many of the original Bernard pattern tools. They even still make the 1890 design pliers. I was pleasantly surprised, as I've never seen these tools sold new anywhere. They are on Amazon, but at over a hundred bucks for a pair of Bernard pliers, that's awful steep. I'm guessing they have a large government or corporate contract driving sales. I found another company in the UK, Mwan Tools, that is also making the Bernard pliers. These are a little more affordable, and they even have ones with nylon jaws. It looks like Moan was founded in 1944 by George Rippon, who bought up the remnants of the W.A. Hodgkins Company. I tried to find a connection between Hodgkins and Schollhorn, but wasn't able to, so they might have just copied the patents after they expired. So that's the full story of Schollhorn, Bernard, and Sargent Tools. I know this one was a little long, I usually try and keep these videos under 10 minutes, but I didn't want to split this into two episodes with all the overlapping timelines. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed to the story, and check out the links in the video description for all my sources if you want to do your own research. Check out the channel memberships if you want to support the channel directly, and stay tuned for more Tool Lore episodes. Thanks everyone for watching. See you later. Bye.